Now we're going to see the best of Future Vision Amsterdam season two. And when this was originally broadcast on television, it was around Christmas time. So there's lots of jingle bells and snow falling. But that's okay because we love a good Christmas carol. Santa dogs a Jesus fetus. There's no presents in the future. In the future. Vision Amsterdam! Welcome to Future Vision Amsterdam. I don't smoke. Rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling. <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling. Watch out for the fart sparkles. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. There's no business like show business. <laughs> There's no uh, I don't remember the words. Uh, There's no people I know. <laughs> show my hairy legs. You had, the, you had the foresight to cover yours. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> They're hairy, believe me. Oh, okay. The gang goes flows through Varanasi. of his head the force that through the green fuse drives the flower makes me what I am the ganga flows through Varanasi singing Harry Ram singing Harry Ram play a wild boy his head the force that through the green fuse drives the flower singing Harry Round the ganga flows through Varanasi all the way to Amsterdam all the way to
say, Squid Boy? What a surprise. It's party, huh? Gee, you tell me, girly man. This isn't even my house. Yippee-i-yay! Our treasure indeed! Hi, Mario. Ar, 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 ar. Long time no see, long time Barbie. No Let's go to your place. Yes. Ar, 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 ar. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mario, welcome to my house. Ar, 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 ar. How do you like it? It's great. This is my new kitchen. Oh, wow. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. You want some coffee? Yeah, I'd love some coffee. You want some? Yeah. Do you want some coffee? All right, <laughs> two coffee coming up. And this is the living room. Oh. Thank you. Nice place you've Thank got you. here. Thank you. Oh. Some beautiful arts or art on the walls, I see. Come, <laughs> I will show you the study. Oh. The study? Well, this is the study. This is where I make all my Lumpia Barbie videos and whatnot. Ta-da! Oh, wow. So this is where you make the, the Lumpia Barbie videos? Yes, this is where I make shit. Mm. Can I say shit? You, you can say whatever you <laughs> I want. I just said shit three times. <laughs> <laughs> On TV. Well, the study. Cool. Yeah. You yeah. want to continue the tour? Yeah. Let's, Let's continue the tour. <laughs> 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 And this is my smoking uh, area. Hello. Smoking here. Well, Mario, and this is my bedroom. Nice, huh? Oh. Big queen size bed. Oh, what's that? I don't know. What's what? Ta-da! <laughs> What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I'm having a slumber party. Do you want to join? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is my bed, people. What the fuck? I better take I'm my boots off. Party in your bed. Why? Uh, my bed's not as comfortable. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Come on, Mario. Come on, Mario. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, this... Oh, oh. <laughs> this bed's so comfortable. I know. You disappear. <laughs> All right. <sighs> So what do you want? <laughs> You're doing another game jam, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's oh. coming up soon. Oh, what's a game jam? Well, for those who don't know at home, a game jam is where a bunch of people come together and they try to make a video game within a very, very short amount of time. In this case, 24 hours. Oh. And basically, it's just a big party. And if we and if everybody works hard enough, there'll be a game out of it. <laughs> oh, awesome. Or a game or two. <laughs> and there's another one in January. Yeah, that's right. It's every January is part of the Global Game Jam, which is where all over the world, at the same time, people come together and make games. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, now let's see some footage from last year's Game Jam. Arr, 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 arr.
Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. And a uh, uh, double fine, of course, used to be LucasArts. That. Mm, well, no, not exactly. Oh, okay. It's well, a, what is the story? It's then? it's. No one really knows except the people involved. But as a as a uh, enthusiast of both Double Fine and LucasArts, what seemed to happen was that um, the company kind of went under new management, and they weren't giving their key members, like uh, Ron Gilbert, who made Maniac Mansion, or Tim Schafer, who made Grim Fandango Full Throttle and stuff, they weren't giving them the same kind of creative freedom they had before, and really pressuring them to make more, uh, to make more money. And uh, the company was, uh, LucasArts was originally created with the idea, we're not just going to make Indiana Jones and Star Wars games, we're going to make new properties. And then they made one Indiana Jones game, and then they made, oh, just one Indiana, just one Star Wars game. And then slowly that became their main focus. Oh, yeah. And by the looks of things, the, the people were, who were there to be creative didn't like that. They knew that the times had changed, so they decided, let's just get out of here. The, the boat's sink and let's just make our own company. And sure enough, it was like 10 years later, the company did go down and it was just Star Wars games and that's it kind of thing. <laughs> but yeah, they became double fine now and double yeah. fine is really fantastic. Everyone's, every, yeah. all the people at LucasArts who were, the, who were trying very hard to be creative followed Tim Schafer to uh, double fine. Yeah. So it's a spiritual successor rather than it used to be LucasArts. Oh, right. And of course, uh, uh, you went over to America. Yeah. And you met Tim Schafer. I did, among other people yeah. as well, including some of the artists and their uh, and Greg Rice, who's uh, I think their producer or something like that. I'm oh. not sure. Yeah, I met a bunch of people from Double Fine. Oh, in my in my years. <laughs> That's about meeting Tim, Timmy. Oh Tim man. Schaefer. Well, for for first of all, I had to go have a have uh, a pint beforehand because I was so nervous, <laughs> and I was there like two hours early because I wanted to make sure I was uh, the first in line. And I was chatting with the woman who ran uh, the Cartoon Art Museum in uh, San Francisco, where the there was a book signing going on, which is actually can you grab that for me? Which book? This the one? Art of Brutal Legend, the really oh, big book. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, they were have they were having a semi secret oh. art book signing. Oh, yeah. And I went, and I was the second, I was the first person there, but I went and chatted with the woman who ran the place. And then I came back and there was someone there like, shit! <laughs> so I was the second person to get my book signed by, by the gang. Oh, they did drawings and everything. They did drawings and everything, yeah. Oh, and just get a shot of that? <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah. I'll continue talking in yeah, the meantime. And um, I went to Tim Schafer and I told him that his his work is one of the main reasons I'm in games now and some of my fondest memories are playing point and click adventures that he worked on with my sister and my dad and yeah. he said this while he was signing it and he stopped and smiled and he looked up and he said I used to play adventure games with my dad too oh. it was like what's going on here oh, wow. <laughs> yeah uh, that's really cool and uh yeah so uh okay uh <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, and also I, I saw up here, I was reminded that uh, you, you were, of course, a big Pokemon card player. Yeah, for a long time when I was a, when I was a young kid and teenager. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, uh, you have a prize up there. Yeah, I've got, I think it's fourth place, 2007 National Championships in Holland. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> that's so cool. The Dutch are very hardcore with their Pokemoning, and I'm very proud of myself I made it that far. And I was using a deck that no one else used as well. Those were the days. I really want to get back into Pokemon. The card game is really, really fun, but it's a very expensive and very time-consuming hobby. But yeah. now that I'm done with school, I think I might get back into it. Who oh, knows? Yeah? They might see me at the at the championships again sometime soon. Watch out! <laughs> oh, well, maybe I'll come along too. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah, come too. That'd be fun. Why not? Um, <laughs> we'll kick people's asses. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so today is floating ground. Yeah. Beautiful day. Ah, oh, we're so lucky. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, floating grounds is the preview for the Free Fringe Festival Amsterdam. <laughs> and there's lots of people coming from the festival that have proposed their pieces. So a lot of them are meeting for the first time. Yeah. And um, going to show each other their work. We're going to exchange ideas and try and generate some publicity for the event. It worked quite well last year having a preview. I, I like it. Yeah. It's and fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. And it means that we know the pieces as well. And it, so we can support them which is the thing we do so we can't we can't pay people that take part in the festival they don't have to pay to take part in the festival but um, one thing we can give them is that we can care about what they're doing and we can we can think with them about what's a good way to present their work how to support them technically. Some things need a lot of support and nurturing and other things are completely independent. There's several pieces in the festival this year that are at uh, other venues and um, do, will do their own thing, but they'll also come under the umbrella and be part of this wonderful celebration of Amsterdam's free uh, freedom artistically. And also it's just nice to give something away for nothing. Yeah. once in a while Why in, not? in this world where yeah. people always have to pay for everything yeah <laughs> but it's a uh, free french festival amsterdam is in its uh, third year yeah this is its third year yeah yeah uh, and i'm sure it's it's grown and a lot and I, I was i was wondering you know is bigger better is it you know well not always that's hmm. the thing um we're wondering if um where this is going. This is kind of an experiment in a way. And there are other free fringe festivals elsewhere in the world because basically fringe festivals have become mainstream festivals. And so the free fringe is a, is a way of reclaiming the, uh, the grassroots of culture where things are where experiments happen where artistic mediums overlap where new things are, are generated where new where voices can be heard that might not be heard in mainstream theater and that's important but um but i don't know i don't think bigger is always better but we're we're doing our best to kind of yeah. cope with it all yeah and put yeah. our arms around it all and care about all of it yeah there's a lot happening this there's year a, a huge amount yes yeah, yeah yeah tell us some of the highlights this all right. year um there's a play called jerry unchained which i'm involved in which i'm uh directing and appearing in as well so i don't know how that's going to be but i'll do my best mm -hmm. um about the life of um a bohemian nutcase called alfred jerry who some people will have heard of. Um, he created a weird character called Ubu, and it's about the last day of his life. Mm. And it's funny and sad as well, I think. Mm. Um, we've got some Pinta that's mm. happening, two Pinta shorts. Um, we've got um, Diary of a Madman, Gogol. We have a lot of theatre this year, yeah. actually. It's fantastic. A lot of straight theatre, and then, as I say, a lot of work that mixes it up as well. We've got dance, we've got more workshops this year. We only had a couple last year. We've got lots this year. We've got a mask workshop with a master mask maker that has a shop in the Vamustrat. He makes Comedia masks, he's amazing. We have children's workshops. We have um, the women from uh, Lady Fest coming in. Oh. They're not calling themselves that this year. They're calling themselves the Fantastic Feminist Festival, the F word. And they're going to have workshops, I think, in welding and also in uh, sexism, everyday sexism, which should oh. be very interesting. I want to see that. Oh, yeah. I want to go to that. I want to learn about that. Yeah. Um, and also there's going to be an exhibition from the women of, um, of uh, Zazazine. Yeah, I love the Zazazine. Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be really cool. And we're, we're going to have a kind of a carnival atmosphere, but with a twist because we've got the fucking bastards coming. And they're going to make fucking bastardsville, which will be an insulation piece that you can walk into and experience what it's like to be in fucking bastardsville, which is going to be very cool. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Pushing my buttons. <laughs> I, I'm, I loved it. Mm. Is it good, your sandwich? I love my sandwich. Yeah? Is it's it the best sandwich you've ever had? Not the best, but no. it will do for Thursday. <laughs> Thursday sandwich! You're it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. He's an animator. I'm an animator, still. Yeah, you're still an animator. Still yeah, going. I never thought I would do that in a million years really yeah oh well tell me about that then because you because i remember when you started you started at a different course yeah i started 3d yeah 3d animation and then eventually i uh, turn over to the dark side and then it was uh, <laughs> 2d, 2D animation and eventually yeah. i didn't even want to do animation anymore i just want to do illustration oh really but now i'm i'm all back baby <laughs> i'm all back <laughs> Do you like it, animating? Yeah, I love it. Yeah? Well, the roughs. I like the roughs, not the cleaning bit, because uh, I hate the cleaning bit. And the coloring. And the coloring. Yeah, but you, you know, like the drawing. I like the drawing. I like to draw different kinds of styles, characters, yeah. surroundings, yeah. everything. Let's take our bikes and ride out in the countryside, yeah. So yeah, you, you worked on, uh, uh, or you're working on the new Kamano and Chibi Chan episode. Yes, I am. Um, you did some characters for that. Mm -hmm. They're really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what I like about characters is it's very, you can do all sorts of things with them. There are no rules, and especially your uh, like Kimono and Chibi Chan, it's very wide. You you can do almost anything. So that's what I liked, <laughs> really yeah. liked about it. Yeah, yeah. We really try to that the artists can really like express themselves in their own style, yes. their own way. Yeah, we try to get that. All the, all, the all the ideas that you never could uh, um, could use for any other projects, you could just. Yeah, and you designed some uh, really cool characters. Like there's uh, there's all, uh, there's like the, the smoking aliens, and there's all kinds of weird characters in there. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. real freaks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, real freaks. <laughs> <laughs>
So yay! And it's starring these two characters here. All the artists who help make this cartoon also make a cameo appearance. And what a motley crew they are, drinking and fighting and animating. It's crazy. So here we go. First time on TV, Kimono and Chibi in flashback. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation, around the world, continuing the major story today. People disappearing, simply vanishing. Details concerning this sudden Saturday disappearance of Flight 370 continues to trickle in. On the morning of June 15th, Guy Burkhardt woke up screaming. Ah! <laughs> For all you people driving through the night, the dawn is here and the day is warming up, looking pretty in the sky. Mm. All is quiet as a nun, anticipating like the morning mists. Your dreams are going home. Keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel and be delighted. Another day is here. Sky above us, earth below. Road before us, no particular place to go. We got no particular place to go. All for the love of it, can't get enough of it. All the things you make of me say. Let's take our bikes and ride out in the countryside. Get a little lost today. Particular place to go. We got no particular place to go. Chibi, how many times must I tell you, you must wait for me to emerge from my meditative state? I might have died of shock. I got you some comics. Ah, goody. But Chibi, you might have killed me. Somewhere. <laughs> no, no, no! She's disappeared. She was here 
one moment. I turned away. I turned back. And she's gone. Oh, my poor Momo. She's disappeared. Oh, it's all right. We'll find her. Don't you worry. She probably just wandered away. She'll come back. You'll see. She'll be back for her dinner. Disturbing reports are coming in from the Outlands where several people are missing, presumed dead. Reports remain sketchy, but it is now believed that whole towns have disappeared. Exactly where these towns and the people living in them have gone, nobody knows. The authorities are appealing for calm and asking for people to remain where they are. And now, back to the show. Listen, lads, you remember Momo went missing? Well, now Mrs. Mooney's disappeared. Maybe she's gone to look for Momo. Or maybe she's taken one of her turns. She might have gone to her sister's. She goes a bit loco sometimes, but don't we all? Anyway, I was listening to George Norrie last night on Coast to Coast, and he had someone on, and they were talking about the disappearing. And I said it was spreading across the desert, and that... Let's go. Good afternoon. Hi. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I have a lost a needle in a feather pillow, and I was wondering if anybody has any idea how I could find it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of silly thing to do. No, it's uh, it's not silly, and uh, neither is your question here. And so I'm going to start off by asking you this question. You ever been in a relationship with a guy where things were going great, or so you thought? But then all of a sudden, he falls off the face of the earth. So I'm going to help you understand the three reasons why a man will disappear. We're in a spin! I can't get out of it! I told you, doomed. No! No! All mankind, doomed. No! We're falling right into it, into the heart! The strange stories of people who have flat disappeared, the simple and awful fact that people disappear. <laughs> It's a magpie. What? Two magpies. I don't see them. They're gone. Jesus Christ. Yes, these are our two special guests. Mona and Chibi Chan. 
Uh, they're actually they're shooting for our um, television show. It's called uh, Future Vision Amsterdam, uh, and this is for our New Year's special, uh, which will be six o'clock on New Year's Eve. So you, all you guys, you're actually going to be on TV. Yay! Yeah. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. Happy New Year for TV Land. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? Here we go. Three, two, two one. Uh, Happy New Year! <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you. You're natural. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, they're natural. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the second time you're here. Yeah, thank you for having us again. Um, before we had uh, we had Kimona Chibi Chan uh, with Tarantula. Yes. And is this the prequel? Is this what sets them off to going and helping the Tarantula spider yeah. with the babies? Well, it's all a bit of a mystery. The timeline is even a mystery to us. But yes, Chibi Chan does flash back. So it does seem to be the origins of Kimona Chibi Chan. Because things really do in real life disappear and people disappear and. I guess one day we'll all disappear. So it's been um, it's been very interesting sort of a journey for us too to you know, explore this disappearing. Yeah. They're not only cartoons, but they're also uh, uh, there was that video game and that cartoon. You can actually play that if you go to chibichannel.com. Yeah. And Molly created that together with Eric von Weiss, who's here in the audience. Yo. And um, the members of our team, they often have several jobs, uh, so he's also a voice actor and, and he's, uh, he's... He's in it too, if you keep driving it yeah. as well, of the, when uh, they just walk in and you can see people. Yeah, all the collaborators well. appear in the cartoon and then there's also Claudio here, he does a lot. He, he does so much animation, uh, it's the voice whole acting team here. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not quite, because unfortunately there, there are two members who were going to come tonight, but they couldn't. Uh, oh, wow. one, one is Dennis the Brown, he's another one of our uh, yeah. characters designers uh, he actually um, he had a deadline today so he pulled an all-nighter and he couldn't come unfortunately and our background artist who's very talented she's worked on a project with Stan Lee and she's really really important she creates our world Anna Engels is her name and, uh, yeah she's in Singapore right now so <laughs> make it, okay let's turn to the audience and see if there's if there are any questions yes so could you could you elaborate on where the inspiration came from we're inspired by a lot of things. Uh, a lot of our members are, of course, really into video games. Yes. We're also really into, you know, Japanese cartoons and pop culture, and it's sort of an influence of lots of, yeah. There's lots of references in there and things we like. You it's, know? it's also the road trip story is so classic, and it's it's an Odyssey story, really. Another advantage that we have is as freelancers, we know other freelancers, so we're able to get this big variety of work. And the piece in and of itself of Komodo and Chibi Chan in general is about all these different art styles and media all coming together and making use of that. It was it was, it was super cool being able to make a game yeah. about this. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if anyone here is into game development or maybe ever thought about it, but I thought I'd mention this in passing. On the 23rd and the 24th of January, so next year, there's going to be a game jam in the Vondel Bunker. So it's 24 hours, you just come, party with us, and make games all together. So if anyone's interested, you can ask me about that, this party and make games. There's so much <laughs> happening with you guys all the time. So yeah, yeah, it's amazing. But the game that they were playing uh, in the animation is an actual game that Eric and I created. And it's for free. Please and play it. And it's free. Plus it's free it and Please and play it. And it's available on uh, chibichannel.com. Chibi, C-H-I-B-B-Y, channel.com. And there, there's animations, there's photos, games. Everything with this kind of cross-media sort of thing, experiment going on here is available on that website. So play the game. <laughs> oh, well, well, of course. Because, I mean, when it comes down to it, in many ways, this is, you know, an underground piece and it's also intended for the internet. Although it is showing, you know, at film festivals and it's been shown on TV and stuff. But yeah, we are very much coming from an underground place. Okay. You know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we're weird. We're quite weird. <laughs> and the project is quite weird because it is a mixed media project. So Kimono and Chibi Chan are also members of a band called the Doppelgangers. As you can see, they're also real people. You know, I mean that's already pretty strange. They appear at performances as well. And <laughs> okay, guys, our time is up. Bay and Molly, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for watching your film. Thank you so much, Kimono and uh, Chibi Chan. I don't know what Kimono is. Yes. But, uh, Next, the drag queens are taking over the show with Ain't That Kinda Girl, a song by the doppelgangers and visuals 
from the Drag Queen Olympics. Arr, 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 arr.
A poem by Catullus, number 56. O oh, Cato, here's a funny thing, to make you laugh until you're sick, and have you howl just like a hick. It's more absurd than anything. I caught this young shit in the grass, screwing his girl, and ran my prick just like a spear, Right up his ass. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's the end of the show and the end of the season. I don't need these anymore. So yeah, <laughs> this is the end of the show. So uh, hello, fight. <laughs>
Future vision and your vision, vision on the television. Playing games. Future vision.